Add is able. Without 
Without you, Lord.
Benz on the other side. Benz on the other side. Benz on the other side. I will make it. I will make it on the Benz on the other side. Jason Wiley to see your granddad and your dad in you. Vintage Wiley. Let's give it up for Jason again. Amen. <clears throat> Our song leader is on his way. Uh, until then, we're going to rely on Jason. Jason's going to come and lead us in a congregational hymn, after which we will have scripture reading by Devin and then we will have our prayer by Brother Savant. Jason, you still got some wind left in you, young yes, man? All right. Amen. Can we get you to stand? Y'all don't mind standing, do you? I always tell folks I'll do anything for Jesus. I'll, I'll be a guinea pig for Jesus. Since we all standing, let's turn hymn number 550. Want to be wonderful there? 550. Let's sing it like we're going there. I'll have it. When with the Savior will enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? End it the troubles and cares of the story land, won't it be wonderful there? Oh, won't it be wonderful? Be so wonderful there. Burdens to bear. We're gonna be joyously singing with heart bells a ringing. Go, won't it be wonderful there? Walking and talking with Christ the Supernal. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Praising, adoring the matchless eternal. Oh, won't it be 
wonderful day. Oh, won't it be wonderful? It's so wonderful there. Let's do We're gonna be joyously singing with our bells ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? There, where the tempest will never be sweeping us. Won't it be wonderful there? Sure and forever the Lord will be keeping us. Won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be, oh, won't it be wonderful? Won't it be so wonderful there? Burdens to bear. We're going to be joyously singing with heart bells a ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Wonderful, he's so wonderful there. Burdens to bear, we're gonna be joyously singing with our bells ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful everyone. For tonight's scripture reading, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 15. Again, that's Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 15. If you have it, say amen. Amen. All right, and it reads, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit. Tonight's scripture reading was taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 15 through 18. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, come before thee at this time, Heavenly Father, as humbly as we know how. Begging, Heavenly Father, that what we do and say here tonight would be pleasing and acceptable to you. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our youth, Heavenly Father, not only for this congregation, but for all of the congregations, Heavenly Father, of the Church of Christ. We pray for all of our youth in this nation, Heavenly Father. We pray for our young men in particular, Heavenly Father, because they are under siege. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to watch over them, Heavenly Father, to touch the hearts of those who would do evil to them, Heavenly Father, that they would have a change of mind and find a way to work together, Heavenly Father, to build, to build all of us up, Heavenly Father, so we might praise you, Heavenly Father, and give you the credit for all that we are able to accomplish. We pray, Heavenly Father, for this... Uh, Youth campaign, Heavenly Father, uh, for the, the meeting to, uh, that will continue on tomorrow and through the weekend, Heavenly Father. We pray for our speaker tonight, Heavenly Father, that he would be able to readily recollect all that he has studied and prepared to deliver unto us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that it's acceptable to you. We know that your will will be done. We pray for those who are sick and uh, ill and bereaved among us, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would touch those who are in need, who are homeless, who are hungry, Heavenly Father, those who are incarcerated, dear Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to bless us and forgive us for our sins. For these things, we thank you for, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of life. And this will be enough. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we ask it all. Amen. Don't you all want to go up there? Amen. Amen. 
Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound? Happiness in that land, peace and happiness in that land, peace and happiness in that land, where I'm bound. Peace and happiness in that land, peace and happiness in that land, peace and happiness in that land. Where I'm bound Uh, No more fighting in that land No more fighting in that land Uh, No more fighting in that land Uh, Where I'm bound Uh, No more fighting in that land No more fighting in that land no more fighting in that land where I'm bound. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Come and go to that land. Everybody will be happy over there that makes it over there. 347. <clears throat> There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the saved on earth shall soon the glory share. And where the souls of men shall and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. And everybody will be happy will be happy. We will be happy way over there. And we will shout and sing his praise now. Praise his name. Amen. Everybody will be happy over there. And then the ransom of our ages will be singing round the throne. In that land where no one ever knows of care. And the Christians of all nations will join in the triumph song. Everybody will be happy over there. And everybody will be happy over there. Over happy. We'll be happy way over there. And we will shout and sing his praises. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody will be happy over there And there will meet the one who saved us And who kept us by his grace And and who brought us to that land so bright and fair And 
will praise his name forever as we look upon his face and everybody will be happy over there and everybody will be happy over there started over here. Amen. Amen. How many of you are happy to be here tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Our song leader has arrived. Unfortunately, he only will be able to sing piece of a song before we get started unless we are allowed some liberty to sing a song or two. If that's okay. okay. I'm serious. Son. We do. Is it okay? All right, good, good, good. I have the unique uh, opportunity to introduce uh, the speaker tonight. Um, I was asked to do so by uh, another son in the faith of mine, Sadiq. I'm honored, really, to introduce this young man. I've known him all of his life. I baptized his mother. Uh, his dad uh, is a minister as a result of my involvement in his life. I've watched this family of faith uh, for over 30 years. And this young man is truly uh, an amazing guy. His lovely wife is here tonight. Halise, baby, where you stand, she is one of my daughters. And then little homie, little homie is with her as well. That's the little one. And uh, uh, this is uh, his family. She is his supporter. I can go on and on about this young man. But there are three things that come to mind. Number one, this fella loves life. He really enjoys living. Uh, and I think that's a wonderful characteristic for someone his age. He has a great personality, a great spirit. And uh, he's my assistant, one of them. My other one tonight is uh, also one of my assistants, Don Toma. Will you raise your hand and let the church see who you are? And then Francis, that's his wife. She keeps him in line. Uh, but uh, I'm honored to work with these two guys. And then uh, Deja is a part of our ministerial staff as well. So we're happy to be here. Hawthorne's in the house, and we are supportive of Stan, and I appreciate him dearly. The second thing I've noticed about him over the years is not only does he love life, he loves the Lord. He loves the Lord. And I appreciate that. His heart uh, is a heart bent towards heaven, bent towards ministry. He works with our uh, young adult college group there at the church as well as uh, with our leaders and we're just honored to have him a part of our team. And then finally, I guess the ultimate thing I can say about this young man is that he's a servant. No more, no less. He is a servant. Uh, he has a good head on his shoulder and I think he has a word tonight to share with you. So I'm honored to introduce one of my sons in the faith, Stan Harmon the second. After uh, several verses of a song, several songs, I mean one song, uh, uh, the next voice you will hear will be that of uh, uh, Stan Harmon II. This little fella here is our music minister at the Hawthorne Church of Christ. I have come to love him uh, dearly. I uh, kind of watched him over the years, but come to find out my wife knows more about him than I do but uh, we're just glad to have him a part of our team. Now, he gets a little animated, Figueroa, and uh, I, we, we can't turn him down. I don't fool with him. I just let the Lord use him. Yeah. So uh, let the, can the Lord use him tonight? He'll lift your spirit. I think God has put in him the spirit of worship yeah. and the spirit of praise, and he does so from the depths of his heart. Some song leaders, like some football players, take a playoff. Mm. Yeah. Not this fella. He doesn't take a playoff. Uh, he puts his heart. So if you don't mind, on your feet, and uh, once again, and uh, he's going to lift us up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. 
Let the spirit of the Lord, oh, let it rise among, oh, let the spirit, oh, let it rise, oh, let the praises, oh, let it rise, oh, let it rise, oh, 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 come on and let it rise. Because I know how to get his motor started. I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise his. I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise his. I love to, I love to, to praise his soul. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise him. Oh, yeah, I love to praise his. I love to praise To praise his holy name. For he's my Hallelujah. 
church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Paul told the church at Corinth that when you pray, you ought to pray in the spirit. And you ought to pray with the understanding. And he also said when you sing, you ought to sing in the spirit. And you ought to sing with the understanding. Tonight, I believe we understand the God of heaven has blessed our lives. I believe that we understand that he sent his one and only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. That is intriguing because what it does for me is it confirms that I'm doing what I know I need to do. The fact that we as believers can gather under the same roof with the same mind speaks volumes to what the Lord is really all about. You can get a bunch of people in a room, but may not always get them to get along. But when they get in a room and the Lord is present, and the common thread that binds them together is there, then you know that can be nothing but the Lord. I am encouraged tonight and thankful uh, to the Figueroa Church of Christ. Uh, I am just in awe by the fact that I'm here at this moment. I've heard so much, uh, so much legacy uh, that is enriched here at this location. Many pillars, patriarchs who have gone on, who God has called home, and then others who are still here around. I thank God for it. It's individuals like yourself that pave ways for young men like myself. Uh, to be able to come forth with the same boldness which God has given you to allow me to do as well. I want to thank the shepherds here at this church, your elders and the uh, foresight and the, just the support that they've given over to uh, Sadiq as he has put this wonderful youth campaign for Christ on. I want to thank uh, your minister, Brother Holt. Uh, we thank him so much uh, for his labor of love for the Lord. And I want to thank Sadiq, uh, my friend. Uh, my fellow comrade in the faith, uh, my colleague uh, who uh, does what he does to encourage God's people. I'm just thankful for his faithfulness. Uh, even the Friday night, every Friday night for GPS to be engaged in God and his word is indeed a blessing. And then to see that he has the foresight to put on a week-long gospel meeting for the youth for the young and not to leave out or exclude, but for the young and the old and everyone in between. I thank God for that. I've been tasked with the topic of chasing spirits. Can I stop drinking? And it's, it's blanketed under the umbrella, the overall theme of let my people go. And that is living in control in an out of control world. If we've ever been in some times that are out of control, the times are not where the devil is literally running around rampant and naked doing his thing, allowing everyone to do what it is they do and to partake of whatever it is they want to partake of. Really, if you would, just merely trying to be a slap in God's face. But yet God, in his infinite wisdom, knew the devil was up to no good from jump. And so he, in his, his forethought, sends Jesus on the scene allowing us salvation and opportunity to be saved from our sins. And, and tonight as we look at chasing spirits, I want you to think not only of just can I stop drinking maybe alcohol, but maybe can I stop drinking on pride? Is it possible I can stop drinking on haterade? Uh, maybe possibly I can stop drinking on lying, maybe deception. Uh, maybe being, if you would, just a little bit irate and, if I may, just ignorant. Can I get past some of who I am who is literally trying to take charge over my life? And can I allow God to instill inside of me what he's planned to instill inside me, which is his spirit? And the reason I choose these words is because of the text that I've chosen tonight. Paul here, as he writes to the church at Ephesus in our text of Ephesians chapter 5, first out the gate in verse 15, he says, you need to see then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise folks. Because in this, you, you, you'll see what time it is. You'll, you'll see what's going on around you. 
you'll see the fact that the things that you might be doing may not be the things you need to be doing. Right. Matter of fact, you may see that there's some things you could do that are so much better than the things you're doing right now. You know, I recall some of the moments before I got saved that I, I, I thought were good times. Uh, do I got any ex lies in the house? Okay, y'all still lying. That's all right. We're going to pray for you. Uh, do we got any uh, ex-thugs in the house? Uh, amen. I, I work with you, brother. Everybody else seems like they want to quiet down. But, but Paul here writes with, with encouragement, I believe. Chapter 4, he opens up as a prisoner of the Lord, and I, I'm just encouraged by that language because Paul knew what kind of person he was. He knew he had a, a mission on the other side of Christ. As he was on the road to Damascus, you remember the story. You know, he was headed to persecute some Christians, some church folk, uh, even maybe here possibly at Figueroa. Uh, and, and he moved with intent to make sure he was successful in his mission. And God shows up and the light shines on him and God has to check him. You know, who, who are you, Saul, Saul? Who are you who thinks that you can come against me, the almighty living God? And he says, who art thou, Lord? And he said, it's me who, you, who you're kicking against. And here I'm saying these things because of the mere fact Paul is encouraged to know that I gave my life as a prisoner to the world. I gave my life as a prisoner to the things I thought I knew. But now that I'm in Christ, Ephesians chapter 4, I give my life as a prisoner of the Lord. I'm no longer going to chase the spirits of the, the worldly perspective of things. I'm going to start chasing the spirits of godly things. Y'all looking a little confused. Are you all right? Just, just hang with me. Let me read it this way. We ought not to waste our time on useless work, mere busy work and barren pursuits of darkness. Expose these things from the sham that they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. Rip the covers off those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from sleep and climb out your coffins because Christ will show you the light. So watch your step and use your head. Uh, matter of fact, make the most of every chance you get. Uh, they are desperate times right now. Don't live carelessly and unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants from you. Don't drink too much wine because that cheapens your life. Drink the spirit of God. Matter of fact, huge draughts of him. Sing hymns instead of drinking songs. <laughs> Sing songs from your heart to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Uh, any excuse for a song to God the Father in the name of our master Jesus Christ because he's given us a new spirit. As believers, I really want to encourage us in order for us to really uh, stop chasing the wrong spirits and get a handle on drinking the stuff that's no good for us. Here's my, my subtopic for this evening. We got to get our minds right. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, come on now. Wait, work with me. I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Get your mind right. Okay, y'all didn't say that right. Let, let's try it again. Say, neighbor, get your mind right. And tell your other neighbor, neighbor, get your mind right. And then it's nothing to just say it to your neighbor, but you got to tell yourself. Say, self, get your mind right. In our text, Paul encourages us to be aware of the times, knowing that they are evil. Paul says we ought to walk as dear children according to the ways of the Lord. He further gives us insight to not allow the disturbing influences of this world to captivate our minds with a false ecstatic exhilaration like that is caused by drunkenness. We can conclude based upon Paul's word, even in verse 18, don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit that we are in an all-out war in our minds. We must choose between these two minds as Satan the attacker seeks to captivate our minds. Tonight, I would like us to see that we can live in control, in an out-of-control world, and we can stop chasing the wrong spirits and chase the right spirits if our minds are right. Y'all got a quick minute? If you roll with me real quickly, I'll be through in about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but if you don't roll with me, then we'll be here till midnight. I'll make sure the security guard whom I talked to when I just walked in locks all the doors and we go nowhere until we hear the word of the Lord. 
Okay. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. Let, let me share this with you. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5. I want to share because Paul here, I believe, can, can encourage us and tell us truly what it means to get our mind right. Paul knew what it was like to struggle between both worlds. Paul understood what it was like when he met Christ to have to change some of the way he was and who he was and how he was doing things. Like even in our text in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, he says, see that you walk circumspectively. That carries the idea of not only seeing how you walk, but watching how you walk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't just look and see it, but you got to see it and critique it. Y'all quiet. You, you can't just walk any old kind of way. Okay, let's go this way. I'll flip up. Y'all got a minute? We have to walk, see how we walk, and know how we walk. Walking is, is to redeem the time. I'm out not to look like nothing but Jesus these days. Now that I'm in Christ, you know, and I'm a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, all that other stuff is gone. See, see, Paul said, I give all of that up, if you would, Philippians chapter 3, for the excellency of Christ. I want to know him. I want to know the, the power of his resurrection. I want to experience the sufferings of Christ. I want to know what it's like to go through what he went through. Because I know what he's done for me is so rich that it ought to change my behavior. Matter of fact, it ought to shave my character, my conduct, as well as my conversation. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do what? Mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, he said, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Here Paul notes and he encourages us to know that there is two different minds that you can have. One mind that you can have is a mind that's controlled by Satan. That's my first thought this evening. And the second mind that you can have, we'll conclude on, is a mind that's controlled by God. If we look here at the mind that's controlled by Satan, I'll meet you in Romans chapter 7, verse 21. We'll recognize and realize that a mind that's controlled by Satan is a mindless behavior. Y'all quiet. I ain't talking about the group. Ain't nobody fooling with mindless behavior. But what I am saying is a mindless behavior. That the way you behave yourself is solely rooted in the fact that you are mindless and clueless of what's going on. You ever wonder why sometimes people do things that they don't, really know what they're doing because they out of they I knew y'all knew that you ever in a position in your life where you are out of your mind y'all got a minute can, can I come down real quickly I got just a little illustration I want to share something I kind of configured together some may or may not have seen it before uh, but uh, I want to encourage you with this they say your mind is a terrible thing to waste you guys agree with that Okay, y'all been using y'all minds lately? Okay, that was like two of y'all. Have y'all been using your minds lately? How many of y'all woke up this morning with the Lord on your mind? How many of y'all went to the bed last night with the Lord on your mind? Lord Jesus, if I can get this thing open, I'll get y'all the illustration going up. How many of y'all use your mind and sharpen it every day with the word of God? Making sure that everything that you do, every step that you take, every way that you walk and everywhere that you go is all rooted in God himself. Mindless behavior is when you just let your mind do whatever it's going to do. Finally got it. Praise the Lord. I was giving myself time. Usually the preacher give y'all time to get a scripture or something, brothers, but I'm giving myself time in that. All right. But mindless behavior. Some of us be sitting around the house and our mind just being neutral. <laughs> y'all quiet. That's all right. I I figured I might get that response. Let me, let me share this with you. Mindless behavior. I got a, uh, a glass of water here. And we're going to use this to illustrate that this is your mind. All right, is that okay? This is your mind. Now, in my hand, I have some, some dye in my hand. And with this dye that I'm going to try my best not to get on the carpet here. <laughs> We're just going to just kind of put this as a spirit that's not of God. Is that all right? Well, let's name this spirit. What is this? It could be anything that's not of God. Come on, talk to me. Satan? Evil, all right. A little bit of evil. Y'all ever got a little evil in your heart sometime? That's mindless behavior, by the way. Just, just a little evil. Yeah, that look a little evil. That's just yellow, Lord Jesus. We're going to be in trouble by the end of all of these.
All right, I got another one. Y'all ready? Y'all got a name this spirit. What is it? It's red. Huh? Pride? Lord Jesus. Pride. What do you think happens if you have a little pride in your life and you just add a little bit in your head? Just a little bit. That's too much, Lord Jesus. Y'all not prideful, are you? Oh, y'all so quiet. Mindless behavior. See, when the devil gets a hold of your mind, when he captivates your mind, you start doing things you don't normally do. You start acting different ways and behaving certain ways. You ever just get that one, you know, member who, uh, brother and sister who just don't want to shake your hand? Or... Y'all don't got that, do y'all? Oh, y'all the holy folks. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I got some blue in my hand. Let's name this spirit. What is it? Anger. Anger. Hypocrite. Lord Jesus. I like hypocrite. Ooh, Lordy, Lordy. Hypocrite. Y'all all right? Just, just walk with me. I, I'm almost done. Almost done. I got one more. It's green. I don't think that's going to affect the blue, but, you know, we'll throw it in there anyway. Jealousy. Lord Jesus, y'all sisters is on it. Y'all naming all the spirits tonight. <laughs> Jealousy. I don't have no jealous folk in here, do I? We got them in here, Lord Jesus. We're going to skip past that real quickly. All right, praise the Lord. Look what happens when mindless behavior is involved. There's nothing in the world the Lord can do for you when you fill in your mind with the stuff the devil feeding you. Let me tell you something. The devil likes to talk to you all day long. He talks to you on the freeway. Y'all know the 405. I know y'all do. Likes to jump in front of you, the devil does, and cut you off. Oh, you said you, was, you prayed to the Lord this morning, you wasn't going to cuss, huh? <laughs> Is this okay? And, and these spirits, these things that are in our mind, we, we got to stop partaking of. Because just a little bit will leave us in a position where we'll be all jacked up. Think you can memorize a memory verse with all that in your head? Matter of fact, do you think you got a good word for somebody who needs Jesus with all of that in your head? All right, y'all quiet. Romans chapter 7, I was giving y'all time now to get there. Did you make it there? Romans chapter 7, verse number 21, I want you to watch what Paul says. He says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is always present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law that's in my members. And look at what Paul says. It's, it's warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And, and Paul here, as he, he, he writes, he, he's really saying, you know, you, you got to be careful because Satan would want nothing more than to control your mind. He would use your mind, if you would, as a weapon, as a tool to control you. The very thing God gave you to use to think with. The devil wants to captivate so he can use it to his glory. Amen. He wants to control and manipulate I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get your mind right. Amen. Tell your other neighbor, neighbor, get your mind right. And you got to keep telling yourself, don't forget about yourself. Say, wait, don't say it yet. Don't say it yet. Don't say it yet. And the reason I keep saying self is because usually it's easier to tell somebody else to get their mind right. And you ain't willing to get your mind right. Well, I've been in the church 40 years, Stan. What are you talking about, man? I know all the books of the Bible, man. I can quote them from generations to revolutions. I can do all of that, man. And I... Well, that's great. Praise God for that. But if the mind is not right, if the devil is captivating your mind, the devil knows scriptures too. <laughs> Amen. The devil probably, I would say, no more scripture than we... Well, let's not go there anyway. My point is he wants to control our minds. We must learn to control and master our minds so that the devil won't win this war that we're in. Luke chapter 15, uh, if I may, uh, Brother Sadiq, can you read a little bit for me, brother? Luke chapter 15, round about verse number 11. We'll be there in just a moment. Satan will literally, church, hold you hostage, and, he won't, and, and you won't even know it. He won't let you go. He'll tear you every way but loose. He'll have you in a state where your mind will just be just misbehaving. Like you could be sitting still and you just have a thought and it was a negative thought and you didn't even think about the thought and it came and it just resonated and now you're mad all of a sudden because you didn't 
take care of the thought that you just had that was not good, that's all right. Amen. I know, I know, I know. Mindless behavior. What do you feed your mind? We eat every day, don't we? What do you eat for your, for your mind? What, what do you put in there for its food? You know, <laughs> out of the mouth of babes, my, my little, little child over here said, hey, I, I know exactly what you do. <laughs> you give it the stuff to make it grow, to energize it. But, but what do you put in your mind? Sometimes the devil will have us hostage and we won't even know it. You remember the story of the prodigal son, don't you? Luke chapter 15, round right about verse number 11. You there, Sadiq? The Bible says what? And he said a certain man... Uh-huh. Read. And the younger of them said to his father... Mm-hmm. Read. Uh huh. What happened? Okay, read. Righteous living. Lord Jesus, I've been read. I've been misreading that text for a long time. Righteous living. Okay, brother, I'm with you. Read. And when he had spent all there, arose a mighty famine. Hold on one second. Here's a young man who comes to his daddy and tells him, Daddy, give me everything you owe me. Now, first out the gate, 2014, he tripping. I'm just saying. Yeah, I owe you something, all right. Matter of fact, uh, there it is, right? You know? But the father does something, and I'm encouraged by this. He gives him what he asked for. And here's what's interesting. The young man's mind must be captivated because he don't realize what he's doing. Hold that out there. I'll be back to that in just a little while. You ever do stuff that you don't realize you do? I mean, just mindless behavior. He takes all the money and goes out and wastes it on everything. And then after he does his thing and he be doing his partying and drinking what he's drinking and sipping on what he's sipping on, now he's in a state where he's in want. You know, there's a song, Beyonce, Drunk in Love. Y'all heard that song? I know y'all know that song. Don't trip. I know you know that song. She said, I've been drinking. I've been drinking. I've been thinking. I've been thinking. Now, my question is, okay, if that be the case and you've been drinking, what you thinking? Are y'all with me? Now, that can go from a physical drink to a mental drink to a spiritual drink. Anything you put in that's exercised when it goes in is what's going to come out. Remember, Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart, the what? The mouth does speak. Matter of fact, Proverbs 23, verse 7, he reminds us of the importance of knowing that, that the, out, of, out of the heart, when, when the heart is there, when things are in there and they're resonating, you, you know, as a man thinketh in his heart, he says, so, so is he. You start acting out the way that you've been thinking out. Are you with me? So if you've been thinking on stuff that ain't no good, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be no Going to be no good. I'm only saying this because I've been there. Out there slinging drugs. Can I get personal with you real quick? Is this okay? Y'all still out there? You you know, drinking that alcohol, doing all those things, engaging in, 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 in parties and different things, you know, beating up on folk and bullying folk. Yeah, yeah I know I look like 100 pounds wet, don't I know? But, but, but it's interesting to me. All the while here, I thought that it was something pleasing to myself, and what it was doing is it was condemning me. It was tearing me up. What it was doing is it was taking me away from what God wanted me to be. But now that I'm in Christ, guess what? Things are getting better. I'm feeling a lot better. Man, I ain't got to hit on you no more. Forget that, man. You're going to get your pudding as it come anyway. I got enough dealing with the pudding I'm going to get for the stuff I've been doing. So you know what? I'm going to relax on that. Are y'all all right out there? You know, I, I can't condemn you and judge you because there's so much judgment on myself. I, I mean, I'm trying my best every day to walk straight. And let me tell you, it's getting harder by the day. You know, it seemed like I was out there when I was thinking like the devil wanted me to think everything was all right. I mean, I'd have some real good, good days. But since when I've been with Jesus, boy, it seemed like he just been, you know, the devil been breaking me off. You know, it's like a train wreck every day. You know, the devil always want to throw something at me. 
Here I am trying to be cool and calm and collect and someone want to pop up after mouth and they, they got to, you know, have me reach back there where, that's okay, y'all don't have to reach, it's, it's all right. But so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think negative thoughts, you'll act in negative ways. If you think sad things, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be sad. If you think you're sick, especially when it comes time to get to church on Sunday morning, uh, chances are you're going to be sick. Isn't it interesting when your mind ain't where it's supposed to be, especially when it's time to praise the Lord, you automatically get a headache? Ooh, child, I, I just don't feel good today. Well, what happened last night when you was drinking? You was drinking. I mean, are y'all with me? You know, if your heart is not right, if your mind is not right, if you don't get your mind right, you, you're going to be jacked up. Matter of fact, if you think you're worthless, you usually turn out. If you think bad thoughts, chances are that you'll do bad things. Jesus tells us that Satan is even after our mind. How do I know? John chapter 10, verse 10. Remember he said, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. In other words, he wants to steal the joy God wants you to have. He wants to kill the spirit you've been drinking on, the spirit of life. And he wants to destroy your soul. The way he's going to do that is by captivating your mind, making you think that you are no good when you get to the church house, making you feel that you're not worthy to come down here and to receive grace and mercy. But God doesn't say that. Matter of fact, in John 10, verse 10, the latter part of that text, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, amen, and have life more abundantly. And here's my thing, you know, why, why would we want to dip out there and drink of spirits and things that we have to do in the dark because we're afraid about the folks in the church they are going to see us on Sunday morning? Well, chances are that's probably okay anyway. That's why we're probably trying to come out more in the light now because the folk who are in the church are doing the same thing out there. Well, just, mindless behavior, I'm just saying. I'm just, you know, chances are if you don't engage in the right things, you really aren't going to wind up where God has intended for you to be. He even told Peter in Luke chapter 22, verse 31, you know, Satan, I, I got to tell you something. The devil's desired to have you. He's asked, he's asked me to, to have you, that he might sift you as we. But Peter, I tell you, I prayed for you. And I, I pray that your faith don't fail. And I like Jesus, and when you're truly converted, strengthen your brothers. Oh, Lord, no, I'm ready to go with you right now to prison. I'm going to die with you. This is what Peter's saying. And Jesus slams him and said, well, you know, Peter, I would love to say that's true. But mindless behavior is, at, is, is present with you. Because when the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny the fact that you even know me. Bible says Peter just kind of scurries on his way. And you know the story. When the time comes, nope, I wouldn't with him. <laughs> it's usually how it is when stuff goes down and, you know, the judgment's at hand and, you know, you got to have a reckoning moment, you know, no, it wouldn't me. <laughs> you know, you get caught coming out of the liquor store with a brown paper bag and it ain't apple juice, I'm just saying, you know. You must, you must have control over your mind because if you don't and you don't feed it the things that God would have you to feed it, the devil will feed you some stuff. I tell my young adults, and we've been on a journey just with the whole fact of, of what it means to be a true disciple, and we've been studying this at Hawthorne, and I tell them, you know, for everything bad you take out, you have to make sure you put something else in. Because if you don't, again, mindless behavior, the devil will just subtly slide some stuff in there. So you got better at not lying no more. So you tell the truth. But you tell too much of the truth. Now you done dipped off into gossiping. <laughs> Folk done told you some stuff in confidence, and now you know you just, you just, just, just chatty. <laughs> y'all, y'all all right? <laughs> just to the second end of this thing, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys go home. Thank you. You've been a patient audience thus far. Mindless behavior. After there's mindless behavior, when you allow God to clean you up, when you allow God to control your mind, and your mind is controlled by God, not only no more do you not have a mindless behavior, but you have a behaved mind, a mind that says, you know what, Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, 
I'm going to do. Matter of fact, Philippians 2, 5, you let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. But I want you to run to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, and I want to share this encouraging word with you, and I'm, I'm bringing it to a close. Because Paul says to the church at Rome, he says, Now I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Aren't y'all glad God have mercy on minds like this? How many of y'all have had a mind like this before? Oh, come on, let's be honest. Let's just, let's just talk. To, I mean, is this not, you know, a, a revival time? Is this not a campaign for Christ? Are we not trying to win souls for the Lord? You know, and sometimes the souls we need to win are the ones sitting in the pews. You know, sometimes the souls are our very own because maybe we've allowed the devil to slip in and grab some of, you know, uh, of who we thought we were and pull us back out there where we shouldn't be. But thank God for mercy. Thank God for grace. And that's why Paul said, by the mercies of God, you ought to present your body a living sacrifice. Here, you know why you ought to present it? Check this out. God says, okay, you know what? This is how much I love you. I love you so much, you, 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 know, you know you done messed up. So I tell you what I'm going to do. That mindless behavior you had, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to give you another chance. One more chance for you. You know how I'm going to do that? Look at verse number two. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Look, 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 look. So you can prove that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Earlier in my text, I talked about, you know, we, we ought not to do stuff and we hiding in the dark that, that we can't go showing out and talking about proudly in the light. Are you with me? I mean, I like talking about Jesus. Matter of fact, I'm ready to preach now. I done shifted out of introduction and I'm finally getting to the lesson, but I'm going to let y'all go. But, but it's amazing to me how God refreshes us allows us an opportunity to get things right. Y'all got a minute? Can, can I preach a little bit? I was going to let you go, but I feel a mighty word coming on all of a sudden. You, you remember David, Psalm 62? You remember what was going on with David? He had taken, you, you, you know, Uriah's wife. He had been acting ignorant. <laughs> he had had some mindless behavior. He had been drinking. <laughs> He had some of them spirits that was, you know, deceptive. Them spirits where he, he craved desirous of this, this wonderful woman. And so you guess what happened? He, he tries to get Uriah to come in and drink with him. Party with him. Y'all oh, gone, that's all right. <laughs> you know, he, he tries to get him to sup with him so he can set him up. But Uriah says, no, I ain't going to do that. One time rolls by, two times rolls by. Matter of fact, he sleep outside the door. Yeah. He ain't going in there. And look at his heart. Because of the mere fact that the people whom he served with and labored with on the front lines, he was not willing to go inside and be in rest and peace when there's other folk on the outside warring and fighting this war. Well, some of the good stuff. I mean, that's talking about a renewed mind right there. But David wasn't thinking that way. I want your wife as Sheba. So I tell you what, after this night, after I done drunk, and now you finally done came in here, and I, I got some thoughts of what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to set you on the front lines. I'm going to make sure they get you out the picture so I can have your wife. But Psalms 62, you find David here in a panic. He's king. He's gotten some of the things that he wants, and now his son's tripping. His son Absalom has rose up against him. Matter of fact, he's granted favor through the people now to be the king, so, so David's running. He needs a hiding place. He needs a moment where he can get his mind right. So he goes on up to the Mount of Olives. <laughs> Wish I had a church. I'd preach this thing. That's some good stuff in there. He goes, if you would, to that Garden of Gethsemane, that oil press which was there that they pressed olives to produce the oil that comes from the olive, where he, if you would, is, is a picture of his sorrow and, and his trials and his suffering and his pain. And basically, David knew he messed it all up. But in there, guess what David finds? He finds some refuge from God. God allows him again to be successful and move forward past his trials. And what I'm saying to us is, aren't you glad God does that for us? Here's how we do it. We have to have a renewed mind, a transformed mind. I'm glad I ain't on drugs no more. I'm glad I don't lie no more. Well, at least I'm getting better at it. I'm, I'm glad I don't cheat no more. I, I'm glad I behave a little bit better. 
Are y'all all right out there? I, I know some of us think we're sanctified and Holy Ghost filled, but let me tell you, we got some flaws, people. And we're living in a world that is out of control. And if you don't control your mind, you'll be out of control just like the next person. You know how I know? Because we'll, we'll do this. Some, someone do something wrong to us or bad to us, and the first thing we say, I got to get him a piece of my mind. Well, here's, here's the problem. If, if you ain't been drinking on the right stuff, they don't need a piece of your mind. Amen. You might need a piece of that. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> Let's go back to the prodigal son. The prodigal son here, the, the, it's an amazing text because here you find the son having lost everything that the father gave him. And he turns around and now that he's in want, he, he gets a picture of his behavior. He says, you know what? I've jacked this all up. Y'all ever feel like that? How many of y'all know y'all done jacked up some stuff? Aren't you glad that even God takes jacked up folk? Let, let me show you. Can I show you this picture here? You, you find he, he goes on and he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rehearse what I'm going to say to my daddy when I get back home. You know why? I'm sorry. I got to make this right. I'm going to put out that old way of thinking I was doing. I'm going to pick up a new way now. I'm going to have a mind that's controlled. Now that I done been out there and I done experienced what it's really all about, now I know what I, I need to really do. I really know what it's all about. And while I'm there, sometimes I, I wonder if the folk who are out there who done messed it all up real, real bad don't make the best Christians when they come back to the Lord. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I be so close to God these days, and I'm not boasting. I'm just, just telling you what it means to get close to God when you know you ain't got no answers. You know, when you're at the lowest of lowest and you know you ain't no good, you got to stay by somebody who is. <laughs> you know, you, you, you position yourself. It's like, you know what, I don't even want nobody to see me. I just want them to see God. And if they happen to see me while I'm with God, I'm going to say, God is who you saw. I was just with God. Yeah. Are, you, are you all right out there? Look at the prodigal son. I'm going to go home and I'm going to tell my father, Father, I've sinned against heaven, against you. I'm no, no longer worthy. Look, look at this. No longer worthy to be your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Now, you don't come to a mind like that unless your mind is controlled by God. <laughs> if your mind is not controlled by God, you, you get this other stuff. And if I remember right, one of them spirits y'all put off in here was pride. <laughs> Sometimes it takes the pig pen to squash your pride. To let you know you ain't running nothing. Yeah. To let you know you ain't in control. Yeah. You thought you had a mind, but you ain't got no mind. Y'all quiet out there, amen. Right. Prodigal son comes home. And no sooner he gets close to home, he's not that far off. Guess who sees him? Daddy does. And guess what daddy does? He goes running. Can, can I help you along in here? You find the daddy as he runs out, he, he's greeting the son. But he ain't greeting him with a machine gun of, I told you so. Sometimes, boy, you, we, we just don't let folk lift stuff down. Sometimes they mess it up so bad and, you know, their sin is worse than our sin, so we leave them lower than we are. Let me tell you something. When God, when God sees you, when he sees your mind wanting to be changed, he immediately greets you. And look at what the father does in the text. He looks at the son, and, and he don't even talk to the son. He, he hugs him and says, servants, get him a robe. Put him on. Get him the family ring. Now, who do that to somebody who you know been to the pawn shop, squandering the rest of the money? Who does that? Get a ring and put it on his feet. Get some shoes and put them on his feet. Matter of fact, that, that calf we was, we was going to kill for Thanksgiving, no, it's time to kill it now. Wow, we got something to celebrate about. What do you mean? We got a renewed mind. My son understands what it's like to be lost, and now he understands what it's like to be home and be found. And sometimes I'm wondering if our mind is not in the lost and found, needing to be found because it's lost. Maybe by chance, maybe by chance, you know, that, that we, we see ourselves in a position where our minds are just everywhere. That we've been drinking of things and spirits that we know aren't good for us. Well, don't worry about it. 
This is the other part of chasing spirits. Can you stop drinking? Yes, I can. I want y'all to say that with me. Yes, I can. Okay, yeah, y'all act like y'all don't say that often. Okay, let's try it again. Y'all ready? Yes, I can. How you feel about that? I want to throw some things in there. Y'all keep saying, yes, I can, okay? You can have faith. You're going to make it. I can pass these tests. I'm going to get through these struggles. I'm going to make it to church on Sunday morning. I'm going to make it to Bible class that starts before church on Sunday morning. I can make it to Wednesday Bible class. And I can listen to the rest of the sermon that the preacher's about to preach and he'll be through. (laughs) Here's my thoughts. If we are to have a mind after Christ, if we are to let him control our minds, we have to give up our mind. Stop thinking about how to get it done and let God tell you how to get it done. There's another son in that text, and I'm I'm closing, who stayed home the whole time. And what's interesting, as he has stayed home the whole time, you know, uh, he's been working. He's been dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's and, you know, doing whatever daddy needs done. So he hears this big celebration and hoorah going on as he's coming in from a hard day of work. And he want to know what in the world is going on. So he has to grab a servant. Ask one of the servants, what, what's going on in there? Servant tells me, well, you know, your brother's back. Yeah, I just kind of had to live, and I don't know exactly what the text says, but the way he acted, I kind of think, you know, the servant was like, hey, you, you remember your brother, right? <laughs> you know, the one that spent up all the money? Yeah, we knew it was a matter of time anyway. We was waiting. We knew he was coming back. He tells them what's going on, and the other brother's just like, you know what? This, this ain't right. I've been here this whole time. Working my behind off, doing everything right. I ain't getting no party. Nobody killed no calf for me. Show didn't get no robe draped over me. <laughs> What's up with that? Would not come in. I heard the seed of bitterness. That's another spirit. You know, would not come into the party. But look at the father. He comes out, greets his son. And says, my son, don't you know your, your, your brother's back? Well, you know, when, when, you know, I've been here this whole time and, and you ain't done nothing for me. And I like the father. All that I have, son, is yours. It's been yours ever since you were here. The problem is, is your head was so focused on, on this legalistic view of dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's that... That, that you forgot that, that mercy and grace follows with me as a father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the same mercy and grace I'm throwing on your brother's mess is the same mercy and grace I'm throwing on your mess for thinking like that, for behaving like that, for wanting to sit out there and not come in and celebrate because of the fact that your brother ain't mindless no more, that he's got a mind to know that I'm here for him. Can I help y'all paint the last of this picture and I'm going to sit down? Three sons in this text. First son is the prodigal son. Second son is the plotting son. And the third son is the perfect son. If you would, the father is the mirror of Jesus Christ who embraces us, amen, to be the mere fact of grace and mercy and allow us an opportunity to get our minds right. Someone ought to shout and say, thank you, Lord. Lord. The reason why we're shouting is because God gives you an opportunity to get your head together. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that that he knows who we are and what we are. Matter of fact, David said he remembers we're but dust. Job chapter 14, verse 1, man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. God knows we all jacked up. He knows we're going to jack stuff up, but he's there to help us with the jacked up stuff. And here's what he does. He allows us the opportunity to get our minds right. I'm through. Are y'all all right out there?
Maybe you're here. Maybe you're here and you're not a Christian. Maybe you're not a believer. Here's what we need you to do. Hear the word of God, and you've heard it tonight. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. After you hear the word, believe it. Believe it to be the word of God. Mark 16, 15, and 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. After believing, repent of your sins. Change from that deluded mind. Change from that mindless behavior. Luke 13, 3 and 5, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Then after repenting, confess him to be the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and we'll, we'll get you all ready and amped up and be amped up with you because we know what comes after confession. But Jesus said, confess me before men, Matthew 10, 32 and 33. I'll confess you before my father, which is in heaven. But if you deny me before men, Jesus said, I'll deny you before my Father, which is in heaven. And then be willing to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Get rid of all of that old junk. Amen. And if y'all just need to drop off some junk on your way out, I'm going to leave a bucket up here. <laughs> just, just, just drop your junk off. Let him wash you away. Let him clean you up and cleanse you up and allow you to have a different mind. Because he'll put a spirit in you. Get this. <laughs> This is a good part. He'll put his spirit in you, a spirit that you can drink from and you never get dry, a, a spirit that always has you excited. That's why I don't know why y'all ain't shouting right now. If you got the spirit of God in you, folks, you, 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 you like to shout a little bit. Man, man, when you know what God has done for you, when you appreciate the fact of who he is in your life, and, and when you appreciate the fact that if he don't bless you with nothing, just the fact that he is the blessing. That you're encouraged enough to shout and thank God for who he is. Because I'm going to tell you people, if you don't start praising him down here, you don't start shouting down here, don't expect to be up there. Up there is a, up there is a praise circle. There's some angels that, that shout 24-7, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. He, he, he has the angelical beings shouting his name because there's so much other stuff going on. That, come on, people. He, he's, in, he's, he's in heaven, a place of peace, a place of comfort. Where there is no pain and no more sorrow, no more sickness. Is any of y'all planning on going to heaven? I'm just talking about the place we're trying to, I mean, cause since I've gotten a new mind, boy, boy, it's totally different now. I used to be sad when I didn't have no money. Now I shout when I ain't got no money. Because when you ain't got no money, you can't get into trouble. See, in Christ, as a new creature, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, those old things are gone. Now you've been given a ministry. Now you've been given something to talk about. And the ministry is reconciliation. That God in himself, you know, has moved into our lives and reconciling us back to himself. Any of y'all glad for forgiveness of sins? Aren't you glad that you get a chance every day? Another chance after that? And another chance after that to get things right? Could you imagine if God turned around and said, this is your last chance? Could you imagine if God said, I'm not fooling with you no more? Could you imagine if God said, I'm sick of you, you're done, death is at your door today, do not pass, go, do not collect two hundred dollars, go directly to hell. I mean, could you imagine if God said that? But God doesn't do that. God says, here, come on, come on, I'm waiting on you. Here's what I need you to do. Stop, stop fooling with that stuff that's making you like that and fool with me and let me make you what I want you to be. Maybe you're here. Maybe you're here and you are a believer. You know, we want to encourage you. We need some soldiers in L.A. I'm new to L.A. Been here a year now, but I'm loving it. I see so much potential. I see so much things that, that can happen. But we can't do them by ourselves. We need more young ministers. I say that again. We need more young ministers. We need more young ministers today. I mean, we need Christians. We need folk who believe in this thing. But they ain't going to believe if we don't believe. Ain't nobody coming to a... Well, let me stop. Let me, let me quit. Let me quit. Nobody wants to come to something that you don't believe in. Nobody's going to invest in something that you don't invest in. People want to be a part of something that's moving. And when you tell them that they can get forgiveness of sins... When you tell them the God of heaven will bless their life and fill them with his spirit where they can walk in this world and not have to worry about the cares of this world, that even if they have struggles through all of their life, if they die in the Lord and they've done his will, heaven awaits them. I mean, streets of gold, walls of jasper. I mean, I mean how, how good is heaven? How beautiful it really must be. And I'm going to quit on this last note. 
preachers get four quits and we're through. This is my fourth one. I like to imagine, I like to imagine that, that up in heaven, and this is just me being silly, they got Nestle Toe House chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> and they hot and fresh every single time. All day long. Amen. All day long, eternally all day long. And you ain't got to worry about nothing except for taking it off the plate and enjoying it. Matter of fact, when you take it off the plate, another one reappears. <laughs> now, I know that's silly, and, and I know that it's far-fetched. But here's my point. To be in a place of peace where there's no worrying about anything, what a beautiful place that must be. And the only way we're going to get there is again if we get our mind right. You have to focus on God and letting him control your life. I'm officially through. If you need to respond to God's call, please do so as together we stand and sing. Will you come? Thank you, Lord. I just want